Good morning, YouTube. Today, I'm going to be bringing to you guys a video that I've wanted to do since I bought the bike and one that I know I've gotten a lot of questions on in the comments, and that is how much I paid for my bike. Out the door, we're gonna go over all of the numbers. We're gonna go over taxes, fees, uh, what I chose in terms of warranty, services, extra parts, the whole nine, my credit score, everything. I want you guys to be able to watch this video all the way through and have all the information to make a very fair estimate of what you're gonna pay if you go to the dealership to buy one of these new bikes. So I originally wanted to shoot this video with you guys in the helmet, going for a ride on the bike, maybe tape the paperwork to the tank and kind of file through it and talk to you guys about it. Kind of be a fun way to do it. Bought a microphone for it and everything to plug into my GoPro. But Washington State decided to throw us some snow out of nowhere and there's the ice around all the roads and so we're not going to ride today, unfortunately. So um, the garage is also a complete mess right now because I'm installing insulation, a moisture barrier, ceiling. It'll be a really nice place to shoot for you guys once it's all together and done, but currently it's a disaster. So I'm going to pull the bike out of the garage and park it under the carport here and uh, maybe we'll even just talk in here, sit by the fire, be comfortable and have the bike as a backdrop. Got the bike here behind us, pulled it out of the garage for you. And uh, I wanna get into these numbers, but first I want to just start by saying, this video in no way is me bragging. There's really nothing to brag about about financing a vehicle to begin with. So uh, this truly is just informational purposes for you guys. I've gotten a lot of comments asking me about out the door price, how much dealers are upcharging, everything of the sort. So this is my first new vehicle. With that comes a lifetime powertrain warranty, which is very cool. Uh, a lot of people have a lot of feelings about that within the Harley Davidson world. They don't tend to uphold their warranty when it comes to using aftermarket parts. I'm not gonna get into all that. I'm sure it's gonna end up in the comment section anyway, but just know when you buy a new motorcycle from Harley Davidson, if you leave it stock or you use Screaming Eagle parts, you can take uh, use of this lifetime powertrain warranty. There's that. Moving on. So we're gonna get into my credit score, how much I put down, everything of the sort, uh, give you guys the most real world application that you can uh, used to make your own decisions on whether or not to even consider this option. So um, getting into it, my credit score came out to a 702. Not great, it is what it is. Um, so there are a lot of different ranges in the FICO credit score range here. There is an 800 to 850, which is tier one. That's the best interest that you can get for many you know, the best, best uh, credit score you can have slash the best interest rate offer you're gonna get. The next is 750 to 799, that's tier two. I fell in tier three, which is a 700 to a 749. You have a tier four, which is a 650 to 699. Tier five, which is a 600 to six, or yeah, 600 to 649. Tier six, 550, 599. Um, so on and so forth. I wouldn't consider probably making a purchase like this with a lower credit score than that. Obviously you guys can make your own decisions, but your interest is going to be absolutely astronomical. So keep in mind when it comes to interests on motorcycle loans, you're not gonna ever see as good an interest rate unless there's a promotional deal with certain you know applications at local dealerships or whatever it may be. Um, Motorcycle loans, boat loans, things of the sort, pleasure craft, they fall under a completely different category than cars. So you're never gonna see as good an interest rate as you will on a car. My truck loan, I got a 3.49% interest rate. This bike, not that. So before we get down and dirty with these numbers, I do wanna mention something to you guys that's worth considering. And that is the, the lower you can keep your principal balance, the amount that you finance when you walk out the door, the less you're gonna pay in interest over the life of the loan and um, just the better it is for you financially. So when they offer you thousands of dollars of gear 
and they offer you a $5,000 warranty on top and a wheel and tire package. Consider really what you need to get out the door and own your motorcycle and enjoy it and uh, what, what you can get away with kind of skipping out on. So gear, right? Um, of course you wanna be safe, you wanna have some good gear, but when you purchase gear on top of your loan, they, they'll tell you, hey, anything you wanna to grab today, we'll just wrap it into the loan, you don't have to pay a cent today. Sounds nice, right? What happens when you get a seven year loan and you're still paying on your motorcycle helmet six years later, you're paying interest on a motorcycle helmet that is probably on a shelf because you've had two more since then. It's just not worth it, do not make that mistake. Now, warranties. You get a $5,000 five-year warranty, right? Well, you already have a two-year warranty on the motorcycle, on the entire motorcycle, and then a limited lifetime on the powertrain. So why would you, why would you spend $5,000 for an extra warranty or whatever they're charging and stack that on top of what you already have when usually you can go to your dealer and, and ask, hey, you know, my two years almost up, can I add a warranty onto this and they'll say yeah. So then at that time you can consider either paying cash for a warranty or then adding, you know, getting a, some sort of a program, I'm sure they have them, uh, so to where you're not going out the door with a $35,000 bike and then a $5,000 uh, warranty and then $2,000 in gear, you're $42,000 out the door, but now you're paying interest on $42,000 for the next, you know, whatever amount of time that you chose, whether it's a 60 month or, you know, seven year, um, versus keeping it down as low as you can. So really, really consider those things when you make the purchase. Um, so let's see here. Um, so with that 702 credit score, I fell into tier three and I ended up with a 10.09 interest rate. That is not very good at all. I do not intend to pay this loan the entire time. I'm gonna pay it off early and make good principal payments when I can because if I were to make the minimum payments for the next Five years, I always get the shortest so that I pay the less in interest. Yes, it's a larger payment than if you were to do a seven year, but you pay less interest over the life of the loan. So uh, I would pay $6,911.91 in interest. I would pay almost $7,000 to be loaned the money to own this motorcycle since I can't just buy it with cash. That is a lot. So if you pay it off in half the time, you're gonna pay about half the interest. That's pretty good. So um, I put 7,500 down so that I had a smaller principal balance and I owed less. With that 60 month, that 7,500 down and the total price of the bike, which we'll get into, my payment came out to $530.35 a month. So the price of the bike, when I purchased this motorcycle, I did not get any add-ons from base model other than black paint instead of chrome and a paint upgrade from the Billiard Gray base color to the white Onyx Pearl. Other than that, no add-ons, no tire package, no gap. My insurance comes with gap, so I don't need it. We'll get into my insurance as well. I turned down the PPF. You can get PPF done yourself or cheaper um, from other places. I personally ordered some PPF off of Amazon 3M. Aztec's a good brand, they make good PPF. Um, slap that on yourself, cut it up, put it where you need it, and away you go. I'm gonna put some on the tank where my knees hit, and I'll end up putting some in the front of the bags where rock chips could come up. Really, other than that, you know, you do what you can, but things are gonna happen, okay? Um, their warranty, you decide if, if that's good for you, if you need it. I did get the loan through Eagle Mark Savings Bank through Harley Davidson. Um, I could have searched around, but with my credit score, it would have been probably about the same. Um, so, let's see. The selling price of the bike, Harley Davidson, the dealership destination in Tacoma was asking $29,049, okay? Other charges and fees, $367.75. Total taxes, like I said, $2,992.34. Total selling price, out the door, $32,409.09. Cash down, $7,500. Balance due, $24,909.09. That is what I paid slash will pay slash owe on my 2024 Harley Davidson Road Glide. All right, so I've gone over all the numbers with you guys on purchasing the bike. Now, one more thing I'd like to go over with you guys is insurance because that is something that you are gonna have to cover 
when you buy your new motorcycle. You're required to have full coverage and um, it sucks, but it's a necessary evil. You gotta have insurance to protect your investment. So uh, Harley Davidson offers insurance. A lot of other companies offer insurance. I did get a, a quote from Harley Davidson. It's pretty dang good. It's close to what I was able to get through my insurance provider. Um, they have good offerings, good you know, helmet replacement, safety apparel, roadside assistance, all that stuff. So it's a good option. At least run the numbers with them. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, I ended up sticking with Progressive because I already have my Triumph Speed Triple 1050 with them. So they were able to offer me a little bit better deal. It's $114 a month and uh, at 30 years old and my driving record is pretty clean. Um, I don't have any speed tickets in the last few years. Thank you. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's what you can expect kind of numbers wise. Now keep in mind that is on a road glide, which is more of a cruiser sport touring type motorcycle grand American touring. Um, if you were to buy a sport bike or something of the sort, your insurance rates will obviously be higher. So uh, yeah. I want to thank you guys for watching this video and for commenting in the previous videos asking for this information. But really, that is the best way to help build this community. If you guys ask me questions, tell me what you want to see. I can bring it to you guys. We can share experiences and, and really create a special thing here. And that's what I'm trying to do with you guys. So I really appreciate all of the help doing that. Um, I hope this video was informative. I hope it helped make a decision for you guys on whether or not this makes sense and this is something that you want to do going forward. Or maybe you just want to watch these videos and enjoy watching me make terrible financial decisions. Can't blame me either way. So thank you guys so much for being a part of this. And please consider giving this video a like and subscribing if you haven't already. And um, we'll see you guys in the next one.